What's good my fellow viewers and my fellow demons, this is GinoTaco91 here, here to do yet another reaction video. Now today, I'm going to be reacting to Mr. Nightmare's 3 True Disturbing October Horror Stories. Now it's been a long month since I reacted to one of his videos. I think it's been like, I don't know, maybe it's been 4 or 5 months, I don't remember how long it's been the last time I reacted to Mr. Nightmare's videos, but I'm back to do more because hey, it's October, it's almost close to Halloween time for the next couple weeks, and I thought it's appropriate for me to do that, so without further ado folks, let's get on with the terror in 3, 2, 1, start. Story one. In late October, my girlfriend Stacy and I took a road trip to Stowe, Vermont. We rented a cabin on the website. Stowe, Vermont. Only about a 20 minute ride. Where that is? Let me know in the comments where that is located. Of the fall foliage, which was just the reason why we took this trip. We had Looks to rent beautiful out Thursday there. night to Sunday. The cabin had a code lock system. The owner said we had to leave before we arrived, and it worked seamlessly. Stepping in, we looked around the place, and it was nice and cozy. Literally everything was made of wood, and it had this very old-fashioned country feel. It even had this distinct oh, it sure smell, does. which reminded us of, well, I guess a country log cabin. Oh. There was a bathroom, a small kitchen, three bedrooms, and a living room. It was plenty of space for the two of us. There were two TVs, one in the master bedroom and one in the living room. There was this other door that was locked, though, which we presumed led to the third bedroom that was listed on the ad. Though we didn't know why it would be locked, it wasn't a big deal at all. We presume the owner mm, had some stuff in there. Sounds awfully suspicious. Us two, us two. We put most of our luggage in the second bedroom so that we could leave the master bedroom nice and neat. Since we arrived pretty late on Thursday, we went straight out to dinner in town. Then we walked around the village for a little bit before returning to the cabin. By then it was late, so we called it a night after a movie. The next day was a cloudy, chilly one. We went out to hike along some dirt trails in the woods near the cabin, which was very peaceful. Upon returning to the cabin, I showered and changed out of my hiking attire and into more appropriate attire for hitting a nice restaurant. When I got out from the shower, Stacy told me she heard something in the bedroom with a locked door. She said it sounded like a radio or recording. I went up to the door and put my ear up on it to try and listen, but it was silent on the other side. I knocked on the door to the dismay of Stacy. She told me to stop because the idea of me knocking on the door trying to see if someone was in there freaked her out. To be honest, I slightly did it for that reason, just to tease her. While Stacy was in the shower, I was sitting in the living room watching whatever I could find on the TV. That's when I thought just barely, I heard the slightest sound from inside that room. I muted the TV and went to put my ear over the door again. Mm. I did hear this slight speaking noise, like it could be from a radio. I messaged and then called the host and told him about it. He said he wasn't sure why his wife would have locked the door, but that she may have left some of her stuff in there. He said as for the speaker noise, he'd have to ask his wife. Stacy and I went out for lunch after her shower. I didn't tell her about hearing the noise as well because I didn't want to creep her out. Why? It's obvious to me the guy's well, wife just left. It's the reason why, why you don't, because you don't want to creep her out. But we still, why? That's stupid. You that, should have just got yourself out of there. Stopped at a park and relaxed for a bit. That's when the host called me and said that his wife told him she didn't lock anything in there. So he's not sure why that is or what we could be hearing. He offered to come by and unlock the door and check it out, to which I said sure. So with that, we headed back to the house. Mm. It was about a 20 minute drive back. When we got back, Stacy let herself in and collapsed on the couch, tired from I guess eating and walking around. I listened into the room again, and I still heard the same sounds from before. I said hang on, I'll be right back to Stacy as I walked outside. I didn't know why I didn't think of doing this sooner. I went to the window to the bedroom with the locked door. There were no curtains or anything blocking the view inside. As I stood on my tiptoes to look into the room, no. I was horrified. I saw this grossly skinny, tall, 20-something-year-old guy in a hood, dancing slowly in the center of the room. He had what looked to be a small radio in his hand. He noticed me quickly at the window, and he stopped and looked at me, smiling. I started to <laughs> get out of the house. She met me at the door, panicked and confused. I told her just get in the car. That's creepy. Whatever stray items behind and threw them in the trunk driving off. I then called the host and told him to call the cops because someone was in the house. 
an hour later while we were sitting in town i got a call back from the host who said police arrived and the third bedroom was opened and no one was in there however they found multiple empty bags of chips under the bed implying someone was in fact in there we went back to collect our remaining belongings and worked out a refund between the host and the website of course we didn't stay there after that we went to a nearby hotel and stayed till sunday and we went home i'll tell you though when i saw through that window that dancing skinny figure i couldn't sleep for nights especially with the thought that he was in there the entire time we were even while we were asleep who was that skinny guy that's creepy all right story two it happened after a long friday night halfway through october a rainy one and drinks were involved I was at this Halloween themed housewarming party with all my friends. I didn't wear it. <coughs> I came straight from work already pretty exhausted. I took an Adderall to wake myself up before going. I stopped at a gas station to pick up some white cloths. <coughs> there were a decent amount of people there, I'd say 25 to 30. I had to meet a few people that I'd never met before. All this socializing and drinking was keeping me awake. But deep down, I kind of wanted to just get home and go to bed. Working in a hospital means I get crazy hours and my sleep schedule is all over the place. Mm. I eventually saw a good opportunity to do an Irish goodbye through the backyard. I didn't even really have it in me to say goodbye to 20 people. I really shouldn't have driven home with alcohol in my system. And I don't recommend anybody ever do that. Always call an Uber. I ran through the rain and got in my Subaru and just started to drive. No music on. I wasn't in the mood. I just wanted peace and quiet to listen to the rain hitting the windshield. Then, driving down some quiet residential road, I spotted a girl walking in the rain. No umbrella, no jacket, nothing. She stopped walking and looked at my car as I drove nearer to her. I definitely let out a sigh as I contemplated whether I should just keep going or not, and my more compassionate side told me to pull over. I rolled down my window and asked if she needed a ride. Without answering, she got in the back seat of my car. I asked her where she was going. She said just down to the end of this road. So mm. that's where I took her. As I he's not right about a little stop, girl. I asked her why she's out in the rain. She said she was just in a hurry back and didn't want to call a cab. I said that's understandable, making a joke about how expensive cabs and Ubers are. I introduced myself as Jake, and she said, Allie, thanks for picking me up. After that, no more words were exchanged. I continued down the street until I saw a dead end sign approaching. I stopped at the final sign, then asked, is it past the dead end sign? She didn't answer. As I was halfway through that little intersection, I looked right, in the rearview mirror, and my heart sank. She wasn't in the reflection. I stopped on the brake and turned around. She wasn't in the back seat. I quickly pulled to the side of the road. And was she out. a ghost? I hurried to check the entire back seat row. She wasn't there. Not on the seat, not on the floor. I looked down the empty road, lit up only by the oh. There was no one in sight. But there was no possible way she even got out from the car, as I had not once heard the door either opening or was closing. he hallucinating? There was no possible way she just snuck out from the car unhurt. I was starting to question my sanity. I started feeling around the seat and floor where she sat. It was completely dry. It would have had to have been somewhat wet from her after being in the rain. I stood there in the rain, dumbfounded, confused scared. I looked around me again, and then I realized to the right of the car, right next to where I pulled over, was a fence. And beyond that fence was a cemetery. And her response to my question moments before dawned on me, when I asked her, where are you going? And she said, down to the end of this road. I looked at the cemetery, which was at the end of the road. No! And I got back in my car and did a three-point turn and hurried home. I don't think I Sorry, was, it was my mom. Drunk enough to be hallucinating shit. So, was the fact that uh, the little girl was a ghost, or was the guy really hallucinating? I don't know. My my best guess is that the little girl was a ghost, and the reason why she asked him to go to the end of the road where there's the cemetery, I would assume she's going back to her resting place. But that is very creepy. Having a little girl who is actually a ghost in your car and just disappeared without a trace, that is just creepy. All right, let's get on to the final story. Story three. 
Last October, my friends and I went to a haunted corn maze in Oak Hill, Ohio. Oh yeah, haunted corn maze. Remember those? I, the name out just I remember of some of those scary um I was with my friends, uh, hay rides. Carl and Cody. We always do haunted houses. Does anybody know that has been onto those to scary hay rides? Let me know in the comments. Some kids saying how last year the maze had to shut down for a night because some kid was actually hurt by one of the workers. We joined in on the conversation. Apparently, someone dressed in one of the costumes actually pushed one of the customers, and they had to close for the night. I guess that added a little bit to the nerves, like that maybe we'd feel like the costume actors would actually go above and beyond just the typical jump scares. Once we got in, it felt like a normal corn maze. It started slow. Then, you know, the occasional actors would jump out from behind a corner or out of the crops. There were multiple speakers tucked away in the background, blasting spooky sound effects to add to the ambiance. It overall was just littered with Halloween decorations and props everywhere. We came to this little split. There were two directions we could go, left and right, and there was a sign in the middle with two arrows. Left side said, this way to safety, and the right side said, danger, keep out. So, two and two, we decided to split up. Cody and I went to the left, the safety side. As we walked, we expected it to be the opposite of safety, that this side would probably be the scarier side, or have more jump scares. Well, it turns out that was right. Kind of. We turned this corner, and there was this guy in a costume just standing there holding a pumpkin. The costume was very bizarre. It was an all-black outfit with this weird blank mask over his face. It was a complete pullover mask, but it only had two eye holes. No mouth hole, not even holes for the nose. He didn't jump out or make any screaming noises. He just walked up to us holding up the pumpkin, motioning for us to take it. We kind of just laughed, thinking it was part of the gimmick. Then, in a deep, raspy voice, Almost like how Batman speaks in the Dark Knight movies, like he were masking his voice. He said, take it please. We looked at him continuing to laugh while moving forward. And he started to follow us, repeating himself over and over, saying take it. Eventually it seemed like it was getting a little stale though, like the joke was over and he should have stopped and went back to his spot. But he kept following us for over a minute. He kept saying take it, take it, his tone getting angrier sounding. Then he said, take it or I'll kill you. Now, I didn't take you better that seriously, run. obviously, given that we were in a corn maze, but I did find it to be a little aggressive of a line. I took the pumpkin from him, and he seemed to stop following us. We continued you walking just run. we bumped into Joe and Carl again at the point where the two separate paths merged, and they both laughed, asking why I was holding a pumpkin. I explained. Everyone agreed I should just take the pumpkin home with me at this point. Anyway, continuing on through the corn maze, it was a pretty traditional standard attraction after that. At one point, though, one of the actors actually broke character and came up to me and said, I can't steal the pumpkin. I told him one of the workers gave it to me, and he asked which one. I said the guy in the black with the white blank mask. He seemed confused and asked where the worker was. I told him on the left side of the fork in the path. He then walked in that direction not saying anything. We all thought it was really weird and took us out of the immersion a little bit. Quickly after that, we made it to the end, and it was only then when there was enough light that I realized the pumpkin was carved on the inside, and the top of it was cut. I grabbed it by the stem and pulled off the top, expecting something to be in there. And oh, there was. On the bottom of the inside of the pumpkin. At first, I didn't know what they were. To be honest, I thought they were some kind of food, until I picked one up. I realized it was a severed human finger, a very real one. Huh? Probably nine more in there. On the side of the pumpkin was a pair of eyes drawn in black sharpie. And under them said, always watching, with a smiley face next to it. My friends and I screamed and freaked out, and we ran to the nearest worker. She didn't know what to do either, as she was just as young as us. Oh my she god. For one of her superiors, and he called the police. Was the there a psychopath in the attraction? We listened to our story. We stayed on the premises. I'm assuming it's a serial, in the middle a serial of the killer or it something. Anywhere. The police took the appendages for, I'm assuming, forensic analysis. I don't think a body was ever found to match the fingers. Huh. We left that place unharmed that night, but not without a permanently traumatizing experience. Ooh, that is... That's something. Yeah, that is something. So that was the video for today, folks. I hope you enjoyed it. And if you enjoyed the video, give it a thumbs up. And if you didn't enjoy the video, give it a thumbs down. And if you'd like to suggest any ideas you want me to react to next, leave a comment down below. And be sure to subscribe and hit the notification bell to be notified for more future videos. And until then, folks, stay tuned.